Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start our Keep Indiana Chatting. So welcome everyone to Oh My Gourd, my Google Drive's a mess. And today this is going to be just a comfortable conversation about tips for organizing your Google Drive. And then we would love to have you engage in our conversation if you are comfortable with it. And I just wanted to give a reminder that this will be recorded. I am Sandy Gehring, and I am one of the Keep Indiana Learning Coaches. I work for Global Special Education Associates. Um, it is a company that supports schools that um, might need some more help or partnering with schools to develop their student services. I also am an educator at Noblesville Schools. This is my 19th year in education, and I love continuing to learn about ways to use technology to enhance my instruction. Um, and Keep Indiana Learning has been absolutely fantastic for me with the collaborative pieces that I've gotten to, to do, learning and collaborating with other Keep Indiana Learn coaches, and then also um, meeting new people. So as we continue with introductions, I am going to throw it to Melissa to introduce herself. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm Melissa Wally, and I've been in education for over 20 years. I work for Hanover Community Schools up in the region. I'm an educational technology specialist in my district, and I'm also a board member for HEC, and I'm a digital learning coach for Keep Indiana Learning. I'm really enjoying working with people from all around Indiana. It's how I met Sandy and Diana and so many other people that have helped me grow professionally, but I can also call everyone friends. Um, Diana and I just realized that we celebrated our five-year anniversary at um, meeting at, HEC, at the HEC conference. So that's kind of fun. Um, we just bumped into each other and started talking, and we've been friends ever since. So with that, Diana. Hi, uh, my name is Diana Knox, and I am also a digital learning coach with Keep Indiana Learning. I work for Clay Community Schools down in Brazil, Indiana. Um, and it's a small community just a little bit east of Terre Haute. Um, this is my fifth year as a technology instructional specialist. I love my job. Um, occasionally I miss the classroom. I taught Spanish um, and English for about 17 years before I moved into this position. Um, I sometimes laugh and tease my bosses that if I had a crystal ball and could see the last 18 months or so, I'm not sure I would have taken this, but Actually, I probably would have because I love a challenge. Um, I also serve on the HEC board with Melissa and uh, we just wrapped up our in first in-person conference in two years and we're super excited about that coming, coming down off that celebration of being back in person and seeing people, that was wonderful. Uh, I also am an Inspire captain with the Indiana Google Educator Group. So I, a co-captain, I work with a team of people and we work on sharing professional development and planning, getting together, uh, get togethers with Indiana Google educators, which has also been interesting in um, uh, the COVID times, but I'm definitely a uh, travel loving farm girl. I love meeting new people. I have loved getting to collaborate with Sandy and Melissa on these Keep Indiana chattings and get to know other people from around the state because I truly believe we're definitely better together. Um, and that segues us on into our first tip of the night. We have five tips for you and we're gonna kind of try because we can always be very chatty. The three of us have decided we're going to try to kind of time ourselves and we're not restricted to that, but that's going to help guide the conversation so that we are respectful and mindful of the time and finish at 7.30 like we promised. Um, so my first tip, um, if you are like me, my Google Drive is a hot mess. So yes, I'm teaching this session, but or not teaching, talking and leading this session and coming up with ideas, but I need to put these into practice. Um, and one thing that I do that does help me is I have common meaning conventions. Um, so I try, if it is something, when I was in the classroom, I would always name things a certain way so that if I forgot what I called it, I could type in what I knew and it would help me find things associated with Spanish two or Spanish one. Um, as in this role now, it's not as easy for me to maybe kind of do that. I spent about 20 minutes today searching for 
a document that I needed because I didn't follow my naming conventions. So I think that's important. And you, you know, you have to kind of think about what what works for you in your position and your organization and your brain. So it's definitely not a one size fits all, but if you can come up with those similar styles of how you name your files, or if you're like me, occasionally I end up with 17 untitled documents because I start it and I have a half a thought and then I close it and I go away. Um, so I've learned real quick to give it a title, give it a name and then click up in the upper left-hand corner and get a name to that document so that I can come back and find it later. So that's tip number one for me. Um, I'm sure we'll have some more time to talk about it, but we'll take us on into tip number two. And ladies, I'm proud of myself. That was less than two minutes. <laughs> okay, tip number two um, is to create folders and subfolders. And this is something that I'm trying to be better at and not just creating them, but using them. Um, it's so easy to keep adding files to your drive, thinking that you'll organize it later. And that's kind of what I do. Um, but if you, when you create things, if you're purposeful, when you create your folders, it's so much easier to stay organized um, because obviously folders help you. Sorry, my dog is demanding my attention right now. If you're purposeful when you create those folders, it's going to be easier to stay organized. Um, folders help you find things quickly. And so you might wanna think about um, just a few main categories for your main folders. And then within those folders have subfolders. So for example, um, and I tried to go through mine today and see like, what would I use for my, or what do I use for my main? And then I eliminated a lot of what I thought I needed for my main. Um, but what I might have, if I were a teacher, um, would be like teaching files would be a main and then personal files, building files where you might have um, documents that are just related to your building. And then I always like to have one for the school year, the current school year, and then one umbrella folder that's past files, because it's hard to um, keep all those documents separate. And it's nice to just to be able to stick everything from the past in one big folder. And then within all of those main folders, you can create as many subfolders as detailed as you want. So for example, within your teaching folder, you might have an ELA folder and a social studies folder, if that's what you teach. And then within those folders, you could have specific unit folders. Whatever makes sense for you is what you should have. And then as you start going through your drive, because if you are like me and you haven't been on top of it since you started your drive, you can kind of weed through your docs and file everything in your folders. And that's probably going to change the name of your folders as you go, because it's going to start to make sense. And for me, it's that's kind of satisfying to go through all of that and figure out, okay, this goes here, this goes there. And, and don't be afraid to add folders, change the titles. And if you come across files that have random titles that don't make sense, now is the time to change them. Don't wait, just go ahead and change it. You can edit that file name by right clicking on a file and, and clicking rename. Um, and like I said, don't be afraid to delete because clutter is clutter, even if it's digital. And, and just like visually, it gets in your way. So that's tip two. So Sandy, what do you have? Awesome. Melissa, I really like that. A, a couple of things that stood out that I hadn't even thought about was organizing it by like building personal class. PD. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what you just finished with, and I think this totally goes with the, oh my gourd is that clutter. And I, I had a principal that used to tell me all the time, clutter causes chaos and yes. that's for my kids. But to think about that chaos, that the clutter of your drive can cause you is just another stress that you don't need. So I love that. Um, so tip three to help with that clutter causing chaos is changing your colors of your folders. And um, I, this gets tricky for me because there are times when I'm like, ooh, let's make it so many colors because it's pretty. Well, that doesn't really help with the organization piece. So 
I do like this way. This is one of my favorite ways because I do like the color. It makes me happier to see all those colors in my folder, but it also, I'm a visual person. So I go to a color to help remember what's in that folder. Um, and there are lots of different ways you can do this, um, but I always try and find a connection between the color of the folder and what I'm doing. So for instance, right now, when I'm working with a lot of different schools, the color of their folder all matches their school colors. So I know if I'm going to Noblesville, I'm looking for a gold folder. That is that connection that I have. Um, I also try to do it based off of when I was in the classroom, thinking about the books that I was teaching from. So if our social studies book was red, then I would make that folder red. And that's how I would remember the, the book matches the folder. Um, some other ways that I have done this or some other ideas is to think about um, having your one main color. So if it is math, and then you could do your subfolders based off of quarters in a different color. So quarter one is always red, quarter two is blue, quarter three is white, oh, and then quarter four maybe is a different color. You're close to the end. So put that color at the bottom that you love at the end of the year. Um, also do it by, um, by year. So, you know, and this is not my favorite because there's lots of times at the end of the year, if we could really work smarter, um, that we would just move all of those files and get rid of them, right? A lot of our files, we do not need some of them. We're not ever going to go back to some of them. We are. So as we're maybe as the year is going on, we have our two colors of green is go and red is stop. Red means I don't think I'll use these files too much longer, put uh -huh. it in the red file. But what I was going with years is make the year a color and then do your sub um, sub files in different colors within that. So this year is going to be orange. And then I'm going to always do my red as reading, my blue as math, my green as social studies or content, um, and keep those sub files the same color year after year so that you remember them. A little bit more with that tip, if you are anything like me, you pick a color and then you forget what that color was for. So set up a template or put it in your um, keep notes so that you know that I made red reading or I made red my chemistry notes or my chemistry file or I made red my PD and, and have that template so that you can always go back to it. Also, um, like I said, try and think about what you're going to do with it at the end of the year. So if you have all of your files and you want to wrap them up and put them in one color for the end of the year, do that. But again, really think about that red and green, stop and go for ones that I might come back to. And lastly, again, if you're anything like me, you start out one way, kind of like Diane was, Diana was saying, and then I switch it because like, ooh, I'm feeling more colorful today. Try and stick with it, you know, really brainstorm what way you wanna start with at the beginning of the year and try to stick with it and evaluate it at the end of the year. And so maybe like when you feel like switching things up. So yeah. those are fantastic tips. Some, I, my brain is churning here as I'm listening to you talk about some ideas of things that I can do and um, with the color coding. And I like that keep reference because Google keep is my favorite. Mm -hmm. It's the unsung hero of the Google tools. I love it. I um, agree. And, you could take that another step further. And then if you keep notes in Google Keep, you could color code them to match the folder that they would go with in your Google Drive. I'm gonna write and, that yeah. Double. I'm doing a session on Google Keep tomorrow. I may have to add that. Yeah. Double organization. I love it. Yeah. All right. So we're ready for tip number four. Um, this is probably my favorite. And little pro tip this can also apply to your Indri, your inbox. I use this same tip in my, we are an Outlook email school, but use numbers or emojis in your folder titles. If you put like, if something that I'm going to all the time, I will put a number one or an emoji because that helps reorder your Google drive. Um, I, I'm a folder within a folder within a folder girl, but I have my principal folders that I use every day. And so I have come up with that way of naming them so that the, the top 10 folders that I use all the time are the top 10 folders in my drive. Um, where the numbers get wonky is 
and I just was doing this as Sandy was talking and I was like looking at my Google Drive trying to think about her tips, I realized, oh, I don't need that folder anymore. And I had a number in front of it. Well, Ratatouille, I had to go and renumber all the folders after it. So the emojis might be because you know I took out folder number six. So there was no folder number six anymore. So then I went and reordered and made six, you know, seven, six. Because I just I, I make them all one. Okay, that's a smart tip. Yeah, put that number one in front of it. That's and then great. like my I use like the top six. So but they're all one. They're so. all one because then that one, 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 one. One, 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 one. There and you then go. Then you don't have to renumber it. See, I was the literal number one, two, three, mm -hmm. four. So they fell in that order. Yeah. But if you use an emoji in the title in the beginning, mm -hmm. then you don't have to worry about that order because like I, so I have emojis that represent like the topic kind of, of the folder. So I like my visual brain would love that. Yeah. Yes. My visual yeah. brain. I like the way you say that. Can I ask a question, Diana? Um, Absolutely. If I'm not sure, how do I get emojis on my computer? So, you know, some, some people, like, I think if you're a Mac user, it's just native to the interface. If you like right click or however you do that on a Mac. For me, our, our district has it so that I can't use that right click emoji on my keyboard. So I use an external site um, that has all the emojis and I can go and search by it. I love, love, love. And it's called emoji copy. Um, and so I just have it favorited and I go find any emoji I want. So I use it all the time when I'm designing in canvas or even in, in slides and I'm putting something together. So I put the link to that in the chat. That's my favorite emoji site. Cause I like the way it's laid out in the search options. Um, and then, you know, if you were to, to rename those folders, like Sandy was talking about, you right click, and get to the colors, you can right click and rename them and get there. So there's tip number four. Yeah, I use Emojipedia, um, but yeah. Anyway. Emoji PDF? PDF, uh, like Encyclopedia. Oh, Emojipedia, Emojipedia, gotcha. But yeah, I like yep. it. So we have a quick check chat. Got yeah. it, I've been monitoring, it's all good. All right. Um, so let's check in. Um, Cindy and Tammy and Judy, um, are there any tips that you guys use to organize your drive? If you're comfortable sharing, you can unmute if you want to put it in the chat. Um, and if you just want to keep listening, we're totally fine with that. Yeah, definitely. Wait another couple seconds. All right. I'm going to go on to tip five. So if you want to add to us our conversation, you can do so after because tip five is a little bit controversial. Um, <laughs> nobody likes the shared with me folder, <laughs> um, but tip five is don't touch the shared with me folder. Um, it is a hot mess express and it's sort of that way by design because you're getting files from everybody you interact with digitally. And it's kind of like if everybody gave you all of their documents and just threw them on your desk and then you want to find something specific and there's a big pile of papers. That's what the shared with me folder is. And that's really the only way it can be. So um, if you want to find something in that shared with me folder, it's tricky. Um, you, you, it's almost impossible, it seems like. So the best thing you can do is just to use that search feature in Drive in that share. If you go to the shared with me folder and then search, it's only going to search shared with me. Um, the neat thing is that you can search by the person that sent it to you. You can search by a word in the title or even a word in the file. So if you know that you have a communication log for a specific student, you can search for that student. You can search for the person that created the file, or you can even search if you knew that you updated it in August, search August. You will get a lot of documents, but it will be one of them. So um, truth be told, uh, for my entire drive, I use that search feature more often than I actually go through the folders in my drive. So I'm, I spend time organizing, making it pretty, color coding, 
but I use that search feature because it's fast. Um, that's my favorite tip, informal tip number six, which isn't part of our um, part of our list, but that's really what I do is I search. And I've, I've tried to be really intentional. Like if, if it's a shared with me document that I know I'm going to need later, I add that shortcut to my drive in the appropriate folder. Um, but if I've happened to forget which folder, that search feature is so powerful. I love the search feature. So that was a great point, Melissa. And I love um, Cindy shared that she uses numbering, um, but really would prefer the emoji idea. So that's cool. Thanks, Cindy, for sharing that. Um, and actually, Melissa, while you were talking too, what you shared, and maybe this is another, I don't know, another chat we, we need to do, but you know, when it comes to naming documents, especially when you're doing the shared ones, gosh, think of how, how great it would be if we all just kept it simple, right? Instead of, you know, those long documents that you try and get fancy with or, you know, so just maybe like as you're sharing those documents or working with your schools, maybe saying, hey, let's keep these easy so we can find them because that's my problem. It's always something like tricky and then I don't know what it's titled when I search for it, so. Yeah, too specific sometimes. Yes, yep. Um, so this little, I don't know, tip discussion that we wanted to just kind of have is like, when do you take the time to organize your drive? Um, that for me is one of the biggest issues I have because I start the year with this great idea and I always start with a fresh, clean drive at the beginning of the year. But we all know by the end of the year, if you don't clean it up, you're missing out on those important documents that you were like, oh, I've got to come back to this. And then you never did because you don't know where it's at in your drive. So thinking about when, you know, when I think about organizing my drive, I generally try and do it at each of the big breaks. So fall break, winter, spring, and then summer right before the end of the year, because um, normally there is a built-in day or if I'm really good when I was in the classroom getting my grades done so that I could take that time to organize my drive. Um, I just always try to build it in, whether it's a night that I would do it or do it that day before. That's when I like to do it. I have realized, like I said, um, those years that I've waited until the end, it's one of those things where it's like, ugh, I recreated that document and here it is. And I wasted that time recreating it. And now, you know, I've got two of them or, you know, Melissa shared that, that document with me and I can't find it. And then it's the end of the year and, oh, now I have it, but I needed it like two months ago. Right. Um, so that is when I like to do it at big breaks. Um, Diana, when do you like to organize your drive? Um, I think that's an excellent point. Um, confession. I approach organizing my Google Drive a bit like I approach my messy house. Um, I like to keep things neat and tidy. That's, that's my preference, but life happens and things get out of control. <laughs> and that's when I avoid it <laughs> until I can't avoid it anymore. And um, post, well, we're not post COVID, but post the really hectic part of COVID, I've not taken the time to organize my Google Drive in a shameful amount of time. And if I don't do it soon, it's really gonna get out of hand. So um, that I've already earmarked a day over Christmas break. Um, my position allows me a flex calendar. And so I, I owe my district 200 days. And so I always try to do like one day over Christmas or a half a day where I come in and tie up loose ends on projects and get ready for the next semester. And I've earmarked some time to, to do a little tidying because my Google Drive needs it. Melissa, what Melissa about how about you? Um, well, I am more of a do it in front of the TV. It's kind of a mindless, mindless task. Or if, you know, there's like a webinar, listen to a webinar and kind of do it at the same time. Something like that where I can multitask um, because otherwise I, I can't sit and do something like that. I'm my brain doesn't work that way. I, 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 I just, 
I need more of a focus than that. Um, and also it's sort of like um, my inbox, which that, now that is completely out of control. So if somebody could help me with that, I would love that. Um, my drive, I can get under control. My inbox is bad. <laughs> I can't live with my inbox bad. That has been my mission to like organize that this year. Mine's but the bad. Google Drive is running amok. <laughs> it's one of those that's really satisfying for me though. Like when I get it done, it's very sad. Well, for that second that it's all organized. Um, and <laughs> I think too, well, it reminds me so much of that messy desktop. Like I can't stand when I have random files on my desktop. So like I always try and those ones that I don't need and the documents that I don't need in my drive, I really try and delete them. Um, if I know I'm not going to come back to them, that's kind of my, my go-to. I have a random obnoxious folder in my Google drive called what the what? And that's where I put the things that I'm afraid I might need at some point and I, I don't really want to throw away, but I don't really want to see him either. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so Diana, um, I think talking so about mine is, this is where we kind of wanted to crowdsource and, and it's okay if you guys don't have anything you wanted to add, but we wanted to see if you had any tips or tricks that you thought of, that you thought would be really valuable to share. You can throw them in the chat and we'll shout them out if you want. Um, if you don't have anything to share, that's okay too. Um, one of my things that we didn't put in here as a tip, but that I love is the priority workspaces in your Google Drive. And you can find those um, it actually, on the left-hand side of your screen, right above my drive is priority spaces. And I, in my role, there are certain things that I do often. And so I, what I love about priority workspaces is I can have documents that are housed in multiple folders, um, but I can put them in this one space. So I have the lovely job in my district of unblocking websites for teachers. And so I have a whole bunch of documents, like I have my instructions for how in case I forget, um, I have a document about different categories. I have the transcript of an email that I will send sometimes. I have unblock requests. I have a document that I share with some as our test student account. Um, and I use that all the time. So I have that in that priority workspace. I have one just like of our, I work at central office and different things that I have to have for here, my mileage forms and things like that. So I am a huge fan of priority workspaces. I think it's underutilized maybe, but it does also create like an intentional, like double workspace. Like you have to kind of think about putting that together and, and what you might need. Um, but that could be a whole other chat. However, um, I did already make some videos, which leads me to think that these tips and some ideas that we talked about, and there may be even be more, but on the Keep Indiana Learning um, YouTube playlist, there's a playlist that's just specifically targeted for Google Drive. And I'm gonna drop that link into the chat for you. I think there are, are there are four videos there right now, um, but um, there may be more as coaches work on developing some things. The, um, the learning lab and that partnership, that's gonna be a space where you can find some tips and tricks specifically for tools um, like Google Drive or Google Docs, Google Keep, my personal favorite. Um, but there's just a nice, with that marriage between the learning lab and Keep Indiana Learning and the Department of Education, I think you're going to see a lot of really powerful things come out to help teachers because, you know, Sandy mentioned time and when you do this. And I think that's the elephant in the room. Our last session was I'm not okay. And, and the push and the feeling of Indiana teachers right now is I don't have time for some of this stuff. And so it's one of those things that I think Sandy said it's satisfying and I agree. So carving out that 30 minutes, I'm going to take 30 minutes and I'm going to dedicate to it because I'm going to have something to show for it. And it's a tangible result that my Google Drive is more organized. I think that um, those types of things. And so the Keep Indiana Learning YouTube playlist, um, if there's something that you want, you know, we, we are working on ideas for chats that we could have. So we would love ideas from you because some things came out of some of our other chats. Um, but definitely check out that YouTube playlist because Google Priority Spaces, I'm gonna give it a shout out, I love it. I just um, was working on that with middle school teachers today and 
I, I kept seeing that and thinking, okay, I don't know what that is, but I don't think I need it. And then when I investigated it further, it was like, why haven't I looked at this? This could be so helpful for me to not have to search for things. It's just another level of organization. And just like you just said, Diana, that really hits home is, um, you know, if we're going to spend time and it really does come down to our own time, it needs to be something purposeful that's going to help us. And, and for me, organization is important to me because it makes my job easier. It saves me time in the long run. This is one of those things. To me, it's worth it. And Absolutely. I too, you know, I think a little bit of it also is how do we teach our students to organize their drives? Mm -hmm. Because a lot more of them now are doing their work in drive, if not now, when they are in college or in their careers. And so it kind of is like how you organized your notes when you were teaching kids how to take notes or when you were taking notes yourself. And how do we teach kids to organize that drive? Or how do we teach kids to use the workspace to help them find files they need for research projects or those different things too? All right. Those All right. are great points. All right. Do we have anything in the chat before we go? No? Nothing in the chat. Okay. Well, we want to... Thank you all for joining us in this conversation. And you can rewatch this chat and find more professional learning opportunities on the Keep Indiana Learning YouTube channel. We are very excited for our next Keep Indiana chatting session in February. So we're gonna have a bit of a break here. Um, our topic will be share the love and we will be sharing resources we love and our favorite places to find resources. In the meantime, have a wonderful holiday uh, season and take some time to rest. We hope to see all of you in February. Thanks for joining. Thank you. I'm going to.